My buddy Jackson Wheat did a review of my video on homology and it's pretty impressive. It's wrong, in my opinion, but it is instructive. If you haven't seen it, I want to encourage you to go ahead and watch it. Link is in the description. I'm going to return the favor and look at some areas where we agree and where I think he missed the mark. We tackle a video that was recently put on the YouTube channel of the Discovery Institute, wherein they attempt to discredit homology as evidence of evolution. That's not all. The narrator and animator of this video is none other than our old friend Long Story Short. See, I told you we were buddies. Okay, so let's jump past some of this introductory stuff. If you Here don't remember, go. Long Story Short made a video on his own channel about the Cambrian explosion, wherein he tried to argue that it was a problem for Darwin and still a problem for evolution today. We've addressed this in a two-part series on Darwin's confidence. Links in the down part. Now, excuse me? Links in the down part. Ooh, it looks like the mistakes are starting early, Jackson. That is called the descript- No, I'm just kidding. We're pretty much on the same page with all the introductory stuff. This is the first substantial point that he makes. I think he does a good job. I would add that the significance of homology with respect to evolution and common ancestry isn't merely noticing some similarities between different organisms. The differences also matter. Okay, here's some more explanations, and here's something interesting. Naturalists like Ernst Haeckel recognize that whales are closely related to hooved mammals. Up until this point, Jackson uses the term similar, but now he uses the term related. To him, this kind of similarity means relatedness, but that is the very question at hand whether or not similarity indicates relatedness, or if it indicates something else. The distribution of organismal traits forming a nested hierarchy is exactly what is expected from evolution and common ancestry. This claim of nested hierarchy is a fine argument until you look at it closely. The problems are numerous, and I plan on making a longer video about this in the future, but in short, here are just three reasons that I find it to be unconvincing. Number one, cladistics can be a useful taxonomic device, but it is hardly an objective science. Subjective post hoc judgments abound regarding how characters are weighted, which are included, and which are ignored. Number two, even with that, long ghost lineages are frequently invoked to explain away the chronological inversions that are commonly found in the fossil record, ancestors appearing millions of years after their supposed descendants. Number three, cladistic algorithms do create nested hierarchies, but this is only because they presuppose common ancestry rather than demonstrate it. So for those who point to cladograms as depicting actual evolutionary history, they fall into the same question-begging trap as with the homology argument. The way LSS frames Dr. Barra's analogy is quite misleading, making it seem as though the Corvette analogy was specifically intended as an argument for why homology is best explained by common descent and not by common design. I'm not sure how I misframed this analogy. I quoted directly from him and in context. I'm making a very modest point too that Jackson actually agrees to a little bit later. A succession of very similar forms doesn't demand common descent. That's all I'm saying. Dr. Barry is saying that a succession of forms demands, quote, descent with modification, but uses an analogy that shows the opposite. He made a mistake innocently enough, and it's kind of a funny one, just how myopic it is. Jackson then repeats this analogy almost word for word, and I guess he expects it to stick. I don't know, we might just have to agree to disagree about what we think Dr. Barra meant. Maybe I'm being too hard on the guy. At least we agree to the underlying point. Quote, intelligent agents are free to reuse things however they want, close quote. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's what I said. So why would the agent follow the pattern expected by common descent as opposed to literally any other pattern? For one, it doesn't, as already explained. But for two, notice that this is a purely psychological objection. The hidden, faulty assumption is that a designer would create de novo rather than from a common pattern. Maybe there is no designer, but this is a childish argument and not the slam dunk so many who use it think it is. Why not reuse the lungs of birds in bats? Why not give sharks a few octopus tentacles or whale flippers? How about a reptile with eight legs like a spider? We don't see this kind of absurd mosaicism in nature. May I introduce you to my friend the duck-billed platypus? In reality, there are lots of these examples. There's an interesting article about that. Link can be found down in the down part. LSS makes it sound like Darwinists redefined homology as similarity due to common ancestry as a way to win the argument that homology was the result of common descent, but in reality it was defined this way after the evidence for common descent was already clear, i.e. the aforementioned nested hierarchical distribution of these traits. Only then was homology defined to make it clear that the word homology should only refer to similarities that can be demonstrated beyond reasonable doubt to have resulted from common ancestry as opposed to those resulting from convergent evolution. Hey, I'm no word cop. I don't want to spoil your fun. Give homology whatever definition that you want. Knock yourself out. But here's the point. If you define homology in terms of common ancestry, it can't be used as evidence for common ancestry. That's the price you gotta pay for defining words that way. No method that presupposes the truth of a proposition can be used to prove or establish the truth of that same proposition without begging the question. 
Oh, come on, no serious biologist could possibly make that mistake. Nobody defines homology that way and then uses it as evidence for evolution. LSS has a person saying no one could make the mistake of saying homology is similarity due to common ancestry and then uses it as evidence of evolution while citing the Talk Origins page that debunks his argument in the bottom left of the screen. Ah, you're killing me, Wheat. They say nobody makes this mistake, and I show over a dozen examples, including yours, where people make this mistake. I think you missed the point here again. This is not a refutation. Talk Origin's claim is flatly wrong. I agree, homology shouldn't be used in a circular way, but it is. The NCSE agrees that sometimes introductory textbooks, even college level textbooks, introductory textbooks explain the concepts inadequately due to limited space and recommends correcting this. <laughs> I have my doubts whether it's too limited space or not, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Indeed, not all textbooks make this mistake. I'm glad you recognize it as a mistake to use it as an argument like that, and that's the whole point of the video. However, more and more people are seeing the problem for what it is. The claim of LSS is that more and more people are seeing the problem, present tense. Yet, the papers he shows on screen as examples are actually from 1947 and 1985. So you're saying I'm misleading, I'm giving false information because I used a present tense verb and the papers were old. Huh. It's true that there have been opponents to this redefinition in the past, but not on the simplistic and misleading grounds that LSS presents in this video. Okay, let's take a look at the quotes. By making our explanation into the definition of the condition to be explained, we express not scientific hypothesis, but belief. We are so convinced that our explanation is true that we no longer see any need to distinguish it from the situation we're trying to explain. Some recommend that we define homology as any similarity due to common ancestry, as though we could know the ancestry independently of the analysis of similarities. Seems to be that it's exactly on the simplistic grounds of circularity that the redefinition was rejected way back then, and it is exactly the circularity that more and more textbooks are starting to reject today. Here's Ridley's textbook from 2004. It specifically calls out the circular reasoning. I couldn't have written it better myself. Jackson keeps making accusations that sound really incriminating, but when examined, they absolutely fall apart. Yeah. Whoa, 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 it's not circular reasoning. Let's call it uh, reciprocal illumination. Fancying up a term doesn't really change the argument. LSS claims Hennig simply redefined circular reasoning as reciprocal illumination, which is extremely misleading. Okay, so first of all, a little bit upset that you cut a really good joke. I worked hard on that one. But more importantly, just because you disagree doesn't mean it's misleading. Henning is either saying that homology is a good argument for evolution, or he's not. If he is saying that, then he's wrong. If he isn't, then we agree. Adding a new term does nothing to help the argument. It's the same thing that the NCSC and Talk Origins has said. Homology is not evidence for evolution. We have to refer to other lines of evidence. Fancying up a term does nothing to change the argument. Eyeballing bones is a bit subjective anyway. It's kind of like trying to guess what someone's thinking by looking at their face. Did, did he really just imply that comparative morphology when it comes to the skeleton is all about eyeballing bones? Yep, I did describe paleontology as eyeballing bones. Guilty. And accountants are bean counters, mechanics are grease monkeys, office workers are desk jockeys. There's probably a lot more to those professions. It's a joke. So sue me. No, don't. Also, that NCSE quote didn't say that homology has to be given up as evidence for common descent. Okay, let's take a look. Homology is not evidence for common ancestry. Hmm. Seems pretty plain to me, but you be the judge. It's clear that he doesn't read his own citations. He claimed that from comparing the cytochrome B gene, we got a primate tree that includes cats and whales but excludes tarsiers, and one tree that had frogs, fish, and birds in one group, and sea urchins as chordates. However, only the former tree was constructed using cytochrome B, while the latter was constructed from all mitochondrial protein coding genes. Yeah, good catch on the nuance. There were two studies that proved you wrong and not just one, but I don't see how that helps your case very much, though. The papers still demonstrate the conflicting trees, and my point still stands. You haven't actually answered anything. You know, honestly, I'm feeling pretty good if these are the kinds of things that you're picking at. Furthermore, he said that, quote, if Darwinism is true, we should be able to construct reasonably consistent family trees pretty much no matter what genes we compare. But that's far from the case. Hey, that's my line. But that's far from the case. Anyway, it was assumed that the inclusion of more molecules and more data in the analysis would eliminate the discrepancies, but that hasn't happened. That's why the scientists in the cited papers are so surprised and disappointed. Yes, they no longer expect to find reasonably consistent family trees. The evidence has crushed their hopes like a soggy old grape. I don't see how that undermines the case that I'm making. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Bad arguments can simply get passed on uncritically. All homology proves is that scientists are just like everyone else, people, and we can be uncritical of things that we want to believe. This is very rich coming from creationists. Yes, creationists. Look up the Discovery Institute's wedge document. Creationist organizations are well known for their statement of faith wherein they proclaim that they have presupposed their position is infallible and will automatically reject any evidence that contradicts it. In other words, they are uncritical of things they want to believe, and not just because they are simply people who can be uncritical by accident. 
these creationists are doing it on purpose with the goal to maintain their dogma by admission. Eh, I'm open to evidence, you just haven't shown any. And, it doesn't take a genius to know that the scientists associated with the Discovery Institute believe intelligent design best explains the evidence, and that they want to advocate for those ideas. Nobody is exactly hiding the ball here. Hmm, but what is this? This is a sneaky screenshot from some unaffiliated religious organization called Answers in Genesis and you're trying to pass it off as if it's the Discovery Institute. If we weren't such good friends, Jackson, I would think that this was a smear attempt, but hopefully it was just a mistake. That's pretty much it for Wheat's video, but now for the fun part, let's take a look at some of the comments. Here we have Ugly German. Is he unironically projecting his own size shortcomings on a scientist again? No, I think that we all need to be careful about personal biases, even scientists, not just as dummies. Darwinism, how that term riles me. Sorry it riles you, Grant. Darwinism is a more precise term than something broad like evolution. It prevents some equivocations, but glad you like my doodles. Um, and kudos to you for using a word like drivel. Let me see if I understand his argument. Uh, no, you don't. Oh, ugly German again. No, that was your guy who used the dumb analogy. I was the one who poked fun at it. Deliberately omitting, okay. I know that I'm wrong. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Hey, at least there's something that we can agree to. Um, that's too bad. Jackson, come on, buddy. Vandalia, sorry you don't like wordplay. I'm a big fan of puns, personally. But nothing during last discussion you had with him. Yeah, I'm kind of dumb like that. Hey. If similarities are evidence of common designer, does it mean that arthropods have a different designer? I don't think that's as slam dunk of an argument as you think it is. It's sad to see jerkies deliberately misleading people on science and biology. Yes, it sure is. Wait a second, is that a shot at me, Abdul? Am I a jerky? Ouch. Oh wait, he left a heart emoji. We're cool, Abdul. 